just so you know, this meeting is being recorded and will be available to be reviewed. If somebody needs to see it, um, we will post it on DPR's website. Unfortunately, we're only able to record in English, but the presentation does have Spanish subtitles. And if anybody would like a copy of the presentation, we're also able to share or email a PDF of the presentation as needed. Um, next slide, please. Um, yeah, just so you know, if you are a Spanish speaker, um, there is an option within the webinar to have our interpreter translate the presentation as we go along. Muy bien, entonces para todos los que están presentes, ah, tenemos la opción para que escuchen esta sesión en español. Esta sesión se va a grabar desafortunadamente, solamente va a estar en inglés y va a estar aplicada en, el, en la página de internet de Parque 6% de Denver. Entonces uh, vamos a comenzar la interpretación. Uh, les voy a pedir que por favor en cuanto a signal al uh, intérprete presionen español si es que quieren echar la sesión en español. Now just for everybody else, just uh, make sure once the interpreter is assigned, you press on the English um, button. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to hear uh, the English channel. Thank you for that. Um, next slide, please. So I just want to establish some meeting reminders and opportunities. Um, we do have a Q&A uh, chat essentially for this meeting. Anytime during the meeting, if you'd like to put in a question into the chat, um, we will be monitoring that and we will bring those to the presentation as we can. Every two or three slides, we may open it up to a chat or questions. Um, we will have a question and answer period at the end of the presentation, and we do intend this meeting to be more of an open discussion. So if you have anything that you'd like to question or make comments about any part of the presentation, um, please, please do so through the chat. Um, I'd now like to make some recognitions of some of the people that are on the call. First up, I'd like to say happy, say hello to Happy Haynes, who is our executive director. Thank you, Happy, for jumping on here. I know you have a very busy schedule. Um, yeah, well, Lynn, that's, I've missed all the prior meetings, so I'm, I'm delighted to have the opportunity to get caught up and to hear the community's views about this project. Fabulous, thank you. Um, Councilman Joel Clark, hello. Thank you for being on here today. Um, this dog park and playground, are in your council, so we appreciate your council area. So we appreciate you um, popping on here. Is there anything you'd like to say at the beginning of the meeting here? Uh, no, thanks for uh, all the work you've been doing working with the community on this, and um, I'm excited to listen in. Fantastic. Um, also from Denver Parks and Recreation, um, Jesus Orantia is our community engagement specialist. Um, Ana Claudia Megahas is also. Um, our East Area Planner. Thank you, Anna Claudia, for being here. And uh, I'd also like to recognize Craig Coronado, um, who's also in attendance. Um, I'd like to also bring to light our design team up in the my upper right-hand corner, uh, DHM Design, uh, Mark Wilcox and Caitlin Weber. Thanks, guys. Uh, <clears throat> next slide, please. So just a quick run through of our agenda today. We're gonna to look at the goals. We're gonna look at the uh, public meeting results from the, the first meeting and the second meeting. This is our third meeting um, and is actually our last public meeting in this sort of forum. Um, once we get to kind of a final concept, the plan is to put that, those plans on our website so that people can review them and give us one last um, round of feedback. Um, so we also had a survey that was through, uh, you know, the internet through SurveyMonkey, and we had, I believe it was 127 uh, participants. That has been a, a very good feedback from our community as far as um, different options that we're looking at for, um, you know, the locations of the, the dog park, as well as some of the concepts for the playground. 
Um, this meeting, we do want to focus on the playground concepts, and we will ask for some of your input. Um, so then we'll have some open discussion, and then we have one slide for kind of the next steps. And then lastly, we do want to provide time for anyone to give us any other comments, questions, or concerns. Does anybody have any questions or comments at this point? Don't see any notes. Uh, Chris, can we pause for a second because the Spanish recording, there is some technical difficulties here. Yeah, thanks for that heads up. Just a minute. I think if, if we wanna uh, continue and then we'll figure out on the back end how to make sure that that we're able to to get it going we do have the interpretation going with diana so if anyone needs the spanish interpretation please look at the bottom uh, if you scroll your mouse uh si lo necesitan si van con su ratón van a poder ver la interpretación y selección en el uh el español Diana, is it okay to proceed? Yeah, good. Um, next slide, please. So real quick, Chris, on this slide, um, I just wanna highlight that we've really listened to the community as you'll see throughout these different pop-up events and public meetings and, and show you how we incorporate that feedback as best as we can in uh, determining the dog park location and the features as well as the playground. There's been a lot of effort that really makes this a community driven process, uh, community supported um, design. And we really want to listen to you and hear what you have to say tonight on how we can refine these designs and, and create a park upgrade that works for your needs. Thanks for that comment, Mark. So I think this is where I'm gonna hand it over to Mark and let you guys kind of kick off the rest of the discussion. Great, thanks, Chris. We wanted to highlight some of the goals for the meeting tonight. Um, and the number one goal is to review and confirm everything we've heard from you to date uh, from the community with all these events to make sure we're headed in the right direction as we continue to develop a preferred uh, recommended plan for the park. We've got some playground concepts that we've been working on that we want to review and gather any feedback, any comments, questions that you have that will help guide us uh, as we develop the final preferred concept, as Chris mentioned, that we will then post on the website. And we also want to confirm and identify the best site configuration to accommodate not only the dog park, but the playground, picnicking, trail connections, and other features that complement each other and enhance the park and the user activity. At our first public meeting, we, we focused on uh, kind of the gap and the need for a dog park in this area of Denver, as you see with this image to the, the right, um, the, the blue are, are neighborhoods that are, are, are not currently serviced uh, by dog parks. And so we looked, we talked about why a dog park, why this location, you can see the blue dots are existing dog parks within Denver um, and how there's a really uh, a strong need for a dog park in this area. We talked about site selection, and uh, just a project overview on what uh, needs to be considered for dog park, including required conditions, um, priority locations, and additional considerations that would go within siting and designing a dog park. And the full presentation is on the city's website with some FAQs and a recording of that meeting as well. We did have our first survey. 127 participants trying to understand better on the demographics on how often you use the park, uh, how often you would use a dog park at this location. Um, as you see, there's there's 24, uh, these are percents, right? 24% of survey results said they would use it daily with another 39% weekly um 34 percent occasionally and then 25 percent respondents would, would not use the dog park and then how do you access the park predominantly it's through uh walk up uh within the neighborhood 
not a lot of, of bike traffic and 51% um, noted that it would be, uh, they would drive up to use the dog park. That's not quite, I think those are survey results, not percentages. Yep. My apologies, those aren't percentages, those are survey results. Um, and then we try to understand better on playground features, what is most popular for the neighborhood. And to kind of start with a broad picture of, of different types, you can see here that multi-tier play, nature play, climbing are, are at the top of the list that we had the most, um, the most votes for those type of features followed by swings and slides and some other um, types of features. And then we followed up with a meeting on site at the park on September 25th, where we met and looked at some different locations for the dog park and configurations. We have what we call location A, which is next to the playground within the open lawn area. And then location B, which is across the channel on the corner of Louisiana and Lippin to, to see if there's a preference and talk to residents about the law, uh, location of the dog park and, op and options. Um, what we found out was there was a strong preference for more natural amenities within uh, the dog park. And this was the results of public meeting number two, where we kind of talked more about the locations, the preferences on the dog park location, and then uh, amenities and precedents. We saw that more natural features like you see here were preferred with boulders and logs and maybe um, GFRC uh, tunnels that make it look like logs, use of wood fencing um, as well as opposed to chain link fencing. We also looked at different precedents of dog parks and sizes throughout Denver and noting that this dog park will be, uh, would we size it at about half an acre. Mm -hmm. um, and we looked at both location A and location B. And what we found out is uh, there wasn't a, a strong recommendation for location A versus B. It was pretty much evenly split. So we looked at um, some considerations from talks with Denver Parks, Denver Parks Maintenance, and others to understand what are, what are of high value within the community and within Denver Parks and locating a dog park. Location B provides the dog park further from the playground and other park activities, keeping it separate. It's closer to the commercial and industrial land uses to the north and to the east. It has more natural shade with the trees along the channel. It activates an underutilized corner of the park where we currently don't have a lot of activity over there, not a lot of, of wanted activity. It also allows us to maintain the open lawn next to the playground, the hills, in that whole area that we understand um, is how to use and it's a beautiful area of grass. It's location B is adjacent to the floodplain as well. So it's, it's kind of a compatible use in a sense, um, but it really gives us more opportunities with the playground by locating a play at location B. And with that, Chris, I see there's a chat, but are there, are there any questions on the dog park locations that we can um, address or talk about at this time? And at this point, uh, I'll remind you that uh, you do have the functionality to uh, unmute yourself, turn on your camera, whatever you're comfortable with. If you prefer putting something in the chat, um, but uh, well, in these sections, it's, it's more to make sure that that uh, we hear from community members and making sure that uh, that there are no questions regarding uh, the location of, of the dog park. And Mark, I guess Mark, can, you, can you remind us um, the approximate square footage that we're looking at and how that compares to some of the other dog parks? Right, um, and I'm trying to re remind myself of those areas, but we are looking at about a half an acre in size, mm -hmm. um, which is about 
20,000 square feet, which is a smaller than a soccer field. It's we're, we're looking at roughly, um, what would that be like a 100 foot by 200 foot space? Mm -hmm. um, right. and, that's for, for being, and that's being designed to what we would consider a neighborhood level. So it's that, a much smaller, smaller dog park. It's not something that you know we feel like is going to attract people from all over the city. It really is for people that live in this neighborhood and with about say a one to two mile radius. That's correct. So it's it's designed and sized appropriately for neighborhood use, not necessarily for regional attraction. I don't think it's going to draw a lot of people from outside the neighborhood, uh, mainly due to the size. Uh, are there any preferences on location A or B now that we've talked through them? Any any other thoughts, concerns, comments, questions? Great. So so right now our recommendation is to proceed with location B for the dog park location. I feel like this is a win-win selection, you know, where we're not taking away existing facilities, we're not taking away the grass, for example, and we're taking an underutilized part of the park and activating it with a new amenity for the neighborhood. So thanks for thanks for that slide. And it feels like it really addresses a lot of the comments and the feedback that we've heard today from the neighborhood about uh, concerns with adjacency to some of the residential uh, homes, as well as activating an underutilized corner of the park and maintaining the existing programming of the fields and the playground. Uh, right, and then Darcy. Team, Joel in here, sorry if I can jump in. Um, I just want to say thank you. I know that um, this was an alternative location that was kind of brought forward by the community. I know we don't have a ton of people from the community um, out at this meeting, um, but I know this was a real point of contention when it was kind of first announced as this general park location among the many that were being considered, but specifically this location within the park. And I know that the team met with neighbors, talked with neighbors, added this site to consideration after those conversations and to see, you know, uh, for me, the first time seeing that this is, uh, that you're moving forward with the one that, that kind of the community asked you, uh, the team to consider, um, uh, I, I think is, you know, just a great example of this feedback process working um, with, uh, you know, citizens having a voice and using that and with uh, a great team listening to it. So um, I, I, again, I know there are a lot of uh, folks from the neighborhood were on this particular meeting, but I know there was a lot of conversation about this and uh, I'm, I very much appreciate uh, seeing that this is the end result of that. So thank you. Yeah, I'll point out to um, Councilman Clark that the added programming of the, of the dog park we think is really a good asset. Um, we feel like it's a passive use, one that will bring people to the park with eyes. And you know, we don't anticipate people are gonna be coming and going you know, at particular times. People use dog parks throughout the, throughout the entirety of the day. So we hope that there's not gonna be a huge impact to traffic. Um, in the surveys that we did, we found that only 25% of the people that surveyed said that they would actually drive. 75% said that they would actually walk to the park. So that's all good impacts. And the idea about bringing a passive activity where, you know, people are there, they're going to be watching and having eyes, hoping that, you know, it'll deter, um, you know, bad uses, if, if you will, um, at the park. So Fantastic about all around. Also, just want to compliment the department. I know you know this is my sixth year here now, and and the vision definitely seemed to be more of these really big regional dog parks. Uh, you know, even in the master plan, it was you couldn't have built something this small uh, for a dog park um, in that original master plan. And really going back, looking at that master plan, and I I really feel like this is this is what constituents are asking for is, is people don't want to put their dog in a car to go take them to the dog park. They want to do it as part of their walk. And so these real neighborhood focused, neighborhood serving 
um, vision for dog parks is, is I feel what people have been asking for and just the responsiveness of the department to really look at, I mean, from the big rules and the adopted plans and the master plan all the way down that, um, uh, that led to this, I, I think is uh, just again, want to compliment the team and the department for, um, uh, for all that. So great job. And then I'm going to pass over to Caitlin. Caitlin was uh, led up a workshop with the Gosman Elementary uh, School and students and has some good feedback to share on that. Yeah, so on October 20th, Jesus and I went to Godsman Elementary and we met with two different groups of students. It was um, 12 students and they each represented um, their grade, so two from each grade. Um, and we just asked them, you know, how they like to play, what their favorite things to do with their friends are at playgrounds, just to kind of get a sense of what they enjoy doing when they go to a playground. Um, and they, they drew on some paper, some of their ideas, which was great. And we brought a series of precedent images and kind of asked what their favorite play features were. And we heard a lot of feedback about climbing and monkey bars, which was great. And then we also had the two different themes that you'll see today and the students preferred the river animal theme, which are the precedent images shown at the top of the fish. And um, yeah, so. It was really great to get their feedback and it's really helpful to kind of hear how they like to play and what they enjoy. And then our survey number two um, came out and we really focused on the playground itself and the concepts. So the first question was just kind of asking what age the children are in your household. So we got a lot of great feedback. So it looks like you know, a lot of ranging ages, which is great uh, to learn. And then the second question was really important to focus on, you know, which concept the public preferred. And we found that river animal, the river animal theme was the winner um, between the two concepts. And then lastly, just to kind of go over, you know, there was a comment section on the survey and some of the main highlights that we heard, one of them was the um, having accessible play features for children with varying disabilities, which is great to hear. And we'll definitely incorporate that into the playground. And then, you know, just adding more trees and plantings, which is always great as well. Um, based on the survey two results and the Godsman Elementary Charette, are there any questions about either of those things that you all have? And feel free to use the um, chat as well, if you prefer. We'll give it a couple seconds. One thing to note was um, there was a strong desire for natural shade uh, with additional trees and plantings within the playground and the dog parks instead of a uh, built or constructed shade with shelters and whatnot. So with that, I want to continue to look at both of the playground concepts that we um, developed and reviewed with Godsman Elementary. This first concept is what's what we're calling the woodland animal theme. And, and some of the biggest differences are on site layout and location. With this playground, we there's an existing sidewalk that comes up from the right that goes in. So we removed that and kept the sidewalk off to the side of the park rather than dividing the grass area. We created these three pockets of playgrounds. One is for a five to 12 year old play uh, equipment. Another is for uh, two to five year olds and then a natural play area with uh, boulders and logs and a hill slide going down from upper level to a lower level, other climbing features within that area. We focus more on a, a woodland animal theme. You can almost call it a Rocky Mountain theme that'll, that'll look at uh, animals that might live in the mountains, such as um, wolves and coyotes and bears and 
uh, rams and sheep and things like that, trying to integrate those types of animals within the theming of the playground itself, using a lot of, of boulders, a lot of logs for playground edgers that you can see along the way with some rock outcrops throughout that kids can climb and play on as well. And then we have an upper, uh, as the, the walk climbs up the hill, we have an upper picnic area with the shade shelter and some concrete plaza decking, um, a path between some plantings, a lot of natural shade between the play pods. We have a synthetic turf area right here. This is more of a, a hill. So you can see the numbers. This is, uh, if we have a base elevation of zero at the bottom play pod, this middle one is at three, and then the upper one is at four, four feet above. So there's a little bit of grade change throughout. Uh, essentially, the programming is similar on both concepts. It's really more about the arrangement of the features and the theming that goes between the features. The play area will all be accessible. We'll need ADA code for picnicking, for play, uh, for transfer to the different zones within the play areas. This next slide shows some images of different play equipment that might be considered for this project. We have the tree fort with the platforms and the slides. We have some images of a, of a wolf made out of uh, a wood that can be a, a play feature. We have the log steppers, the boulders that you see on the upper right that can be utilized. And some other uh, animals or creatures made out of wood um, that can be used for play features. And then we have uh, swings made out of wood as some potential options for this theme. And this next slide shows the context with the dog park in context with this playground alternate. You can see how the dog park is fairly separated. We have the blue dashed line is the 100 year floodplain that we have to stay out of with any kind of built improvements. By relocating the walk off to the side, it opens up this entire lawn area. The current walk goes right through here and up. Really opens up that lawn area. Our concept to our river animal theme uh, looks at uh, more of the riparian habitat or the habitat that can be found along a river. It can use animals such as uh, dragonflies or fish or um, beavers and things like that. So there's some, some strong elements of river animals that can be applied to the project. We did keep the existing concrete path that comes up as the main circulation route to a shade shelter, uh, a kind of a riverine pattern in the concrete, and then three play pods with the five to 12 year old play in the top. We have the two to five year old play in the lower platform, and then a, a nature play area that's got um, some logs and boulder features. It's got a hill slide, one of the unique thematic elements with this concept is looking at what we call a beaver's den at the top, almost like a beaver's lodge that you can walk into and then go down the slide into the lower play pit. So some unique elements with another uh, walk that meanders through the trees and plants that you can connect through the play pods and the play spaces between these different zones. And then here's some images of the dragonfly potential for play equipment. We have some towers with slides and, and nets that go between that can have thematic elements um, that kind of tie and unify the play equipment. Maybe some fish sculptures that have climbing um, handholds for the smaller kids or even design them so they're for the larger kids that can kind of come up these walls for climbing and over, overhead capabilities. There's a, a group swing, saucer swing or a tire swing can be included within the design as well.
And this shot uh, slide shows the overall context, again, with the dog park in the upper right corner, and then showing how the existing sidewalk kind of comes in and connects to this space here at the top and relates to the overall site. So some initial feedback that we've heard from the survey, um, it's kind of a repetition of what Caitlin mentioned. There is a strong need for ADA accessibility for the playground and wheelchair accessible play features. Um, a, a few comments came back on that to make sure that we are all inclusive, uh, incorporating additional trees and plantings for natural shade and to make sure that we provide a variety of play features for a variety of ages, two to five, six to 12, and for the older age group of the teenagers, 13 to 18, who, who want to incorporate more socializing within play um, and more challenging play uh, features within the park for that age group. And with that, I want to put both concepts up on the screen side by side and really want to have an open conversation and dialogue with you, the community, on, on what you like about each one, what you would like to see incorporated, um, some things that you, you may not want to see out here, or any kind of comments, um, questions, or, or additions you'd like to see to the playground design. And feel free to unmute yourself, turn on your video, or use the chat function as well. And it's okay if there aren't any questions or comments. There, there's a, a lot of uh, good things about both, I feel. I, I could, it's, they're, they're both fun and exciting concepts that were well received by the children and the community today. I just put in the, um, comment box, Mark, that I hope that we can use the incorporate, uh, I think we can incorporate the use of slope between the play areas. And I know you kind of explained that a little bit, um, but I think that there's a really cool opportunity here since the playgrounds at the top of the hill that maybe the play pits can kind of tear down and um, <clears throat> really use the slope in between the spaces, you know, for slides, rock scrambles, what have you. Right, yeah. And that's the unique thing about this site is there is quite a bit of grade change to where we can do some fun things like that by creating terrace play pods and features. There's also been some discussion of trying to incorporate possibly a wavy walk on the back side of one of the play pits, a very small one for kids to, uh, with rolling um, toys to be able to kind of roll up and down through some, some small waves in the sidewalk. Yeah, so Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is that what we're gonna do here is kind of take the best of both concepts and <clears throat> form them into uh, a preferred concept. Um, I think you, we found that the, the river animal theme, the riparian theme is um, what will probably kind of drive us forward. Um, <clears throat> the plan is to solidify the concept. And then, like I said before, earlier in the meeting, we'll publish that final plan um, on our DPR website. And that'll kind of get us to what we call, like I said, the preferred concept. Um, at that point, the design team will work with our engineering group and we'll start working on the technical drawings. Um, and then we go through a pretty rigorous quality um, review panel and we'll go through 60%, 90%, and 100% as we develop all of those drawings. So we'll try to keep, yeah, sorry. So that's fine to go to that. <clears throat> So this is uh, the next steps. Um, so again, the final designs, um, and then the technical drawings, that'll get us into about spring, March area. And then um, once we have 
a set of drawings that we feel are um, within our budget for both the dog park and the playgrounds, then the plan is to put the project out to bid with our, we have a construction on call group and we'll get bids in and then see if we can find a contractor that can build it for what we have budgeted. Um, so yeah, our last slide here, uh, we just wanted to see if there's any, you know, open commentary, anybody want to make any other um, comments about the project or see anything that you might be concerned about, please, please let us know at this point. Hey, um, Chris, this is happy to that last point you were just making, which, which I'm excited about getting the contractor to build what we want. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, but you said build to the budget we have. And so the question I'm asking is, are we getting sufficient feedback from the community to be able to uh, sort of prioritize um, um, either, you know, features or elements um, such that it, it, that um, the, uh, if the, costs aren't coming back within budget that we already have and we don't have to go back out necessarily to the community but we have a, an idea of what their their uh, preferences and their top priorities are um, in order to move forward yeah certainly so part of the design team um, they're responsible for developing a budget that is in line with current costs um, we'll be doing that again in each of those landmarks um, as we move forward. Um, and then typically through the construction bidding process, we will identify two or three items that we are calling, that are called add alternates. And those okay. are ways for us to have yeah. some pieces on hold that might be extra bells and whistles. And then as you may know, during the construction process, we carry a 10% contingency which is for like mistakes or unforeseen circumstance. Now, if we're good, and I think we are, uh, we don't use that contingency. In some cases, we can pick up those one, two, three adults in that order. And what I'm hearing from you, and I think this is also really important, is that at some point we need to touch back with the community and figure out what those priorities are. Mm -hmm. So if we can only say bring back one or two priorities, we want to make sure we're doing what the community and the neighbors yeah. feel is most important. That's great. Thanks. Great. Well, it sounds like we're, we're heading in a good direction. We've seen a lot of feedback online and through the online surveys. Uh, and through our, our meetings with the school and the initial public meeting, number one and number two, uh, feel like we have some good, good direction and good feedback to progress the designs to a preferred alternative. Um, as Chris mentioned, that preferred alternative will spend the next uh, few weeks developing. Um, and we have received some internal comments from the city as well, from their operations and maintenance departments and others on a few adjustments they'd like to see within the preferred concept. So we'll take all those, those feedback, those concepts, we'll develop a preferred concept. And hopefully, um, Chris, sometime in January, we'll have that up on the city's project website so everyone can see that. And if you have any further comments or questions on that, at that time, you'll have, you'll have the, the final concept to review as we start to develop those designs. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. You know, I think it's important that we get a final sign off on the preferred alternative. And because that, you know, typically we want to have all of the horizontal layout, all the components of the project um, identified so that when we go from 30% to 60%, we really um, kind of know the scope of the project and the rest that we're figuring out are the details and how it all gets built. That's kind of the typical order of magnitude. And then of course, all, all along the way, checking our budget to make sure that what we're hoping to deliver, it meets within 
what we can afford for the money that's been allocated. Um, I just want to ask Jesus, do you have, do you anticipate that we might do another survey, another online survey? Can, can you, everyone hear me okay, Chris? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I don't, I think from the councilman's comments earlier today and the, the feedback we've uh, at least seen um, from community members that are, are here, um, I don't think that that there would be a, a another necessary uh, survey for for the final design. Um, I think between the charrette, uh, the surveys, the public meetings, we've heard enough that the that we are headed in the the right direction, um, and and should be able to finalize it uh, and get. Uh, this part of town, the the dog park that they've long waited for, um, with with the new playground. Excellent. Thank you for that comment. Um, I'm I'm agreeing with you. Um, it wasn't a trick question. <laughs> it was just uh, trying to make sure we're all on the same page. And you know, we'll do our best to communicate with the neighbors and the community via our website and post updates. Um, we may be able to even put signs, you know, yard signs at the park once we get closer to construction so people know um, what's going to be happening. You know, at some point when we get there, we'll have to put, there'll be fencing that'll get put up and we'll protect the area that will be under construction so that, you know, um, people won't be wandering around when we've got all of our, um, you know, contractors working out there. But we'll do our best to communicate as we get um, those, those items moving forward. Yeah, so I don't know, maybe we can uh, give people back 15 minutes, um, get a chance to walk your dog or do whatever you need. <laughs> feel like we've uh, covered all the points we need. Um, Mark, Caitlin, do you have any other things you wanna say? No, just thank you. I know we, we only had a couple on the line tonight, but we do really appreciate you attending and, and coming out to at least listen to hear any updates to be involved in your community. It's very important for, uh, for the city, for us, as, as you guide, you help guide the direction of your park. Um, and again, all this information will be online because I'm sure we'll see a lot of, of voices wanting to be heard through online participation as well. So thank you for your time tonight. Councilman Clark, would you like us to forward the presentation to you or um, anything like that? For your you know newsletter or to disseminate any other info yeah that'd be great thank you okay excellent happy do you have any other last comments you'd like to make no i uh, i thank uh, thank you it was really illuminating for me it, it, it clearly reflects a lot of work uh, on the part of the team but uh, particularly on the part of the community um, you know lots of things to sort out and to think about and um, um, it, it, uh, it looks like it's in great shape. Uh, um, Councilman Clark really appreciate your uh, leadership and you know and advocacy for the community on finding the win-win here um, and, and uh, I, it, it looks to me like that's just exactly what this community found a way to do and so I, I'm, I'm just really um, Excited about the next steps. Awesome. Jesus, any last comments? No, none on me, on my part. Just want to thank the councilman and, and the team community members um, for, for participating. Councilman, I know you've been a big champion, uh, not only of this, but of dog parks and parks in general. So. Uh, we thank you and we look forward when we're able to uh, open this dog park. This will be a good showcase. Show people it can be done. You bet. Yeah. Excellent. Well, we get two, 10 minutes back. That's, that's a gift too. <laughs> My dog needs a walk, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, folks. Well, I'm going to sign off. Thank you for your time.
We look forward to our next meeting. Happy holidays, and uh, we'll see you on the next slide. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. I missed uh, 